This EQ plugin is obviously inspired by FabFilter's Pro Q3, but with one major difference. It's completely free. This video is sponsored by DistroKid. Follow the VIP link in the description down below to get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music to the world. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you will. ZL Equalizer is the plugin that we're going to be taking a look at today, but I want to set some expectations up front because although it's obviously heavily influenced by FabFilters Pro Q3, I would say it isn't quite as refined. However, it also doesn't cost $169. Instead, it's a free open source plugin. That's a godsend to those of you who are home studio enthusiasts and $169 $9 is quite a lot for you to spend on one plugin. Now in this video we're not going to be treating it just as a kind of a review but also as a mini tutorial to get you started. So if you do decide to download this plugin I highly recommend you watch the whole of this video to be up and running with this pretty powerful EQ plugin. Let's dive in and take a look. So this plugin behaves largely as you'd expect if you've ever used an EQ plugin like this. So for example, by double clicking in the central area here, we can add a band. We can add up to 16 bands in total, which is already more than some stock plugins offer that come with your door. So you've already got an advantage there if you get hold of this one. Now once we've added our bands, of course, we can drag them around. So we can increase or decrease the gain or we can change the frequency of the band by dragging it around. Now, obviously, these bands interact with each other. They all have an effect upon each other. So the resulting EQ curve, because of their effect, is shown in yellow here, okay? Now, using just your mouse, you can do, obviously, dragging things around. But also, if you've got a scroll wheel on your mouse, you can use that to adjust the Q of the band, okay? That's the sort of area of effect if you like so that's nice and easy and there's also this floating control that we can see here for a few operations so we can bypass the band by clicking on the sort of power button here we can choose the type of band that we're using here so at the moment it's a peak band but we could go and you know choose a notch for example um, or choose say a high shelf here um, any of the main sort of EQ bands that you normally see I'll go back to using peak a nice touch that we've got here is the fact that we can isolate or solo the band here by clicking on the little headphone icon. So I'm going to, in a moment, pull up the sound of the acoustic guitar we're working on, and then I'm going to hit the solo button, and I'll drag this around, and you can hear um, how it isolates that frequency range. <laughs> So this is really handy if you're either searching for a problematic frequency range or, or maybe it's something that you actually want to boost because it sounds particularly nice. Anytime you're sort of hunting for sort of particular frequencies, that solo feature is very useful indeed. So we've got a lot of control from this floating control here and by dragging the actual band around. But we can also control its behavior in the bottom left panel here. Now we can adjust the frequency here as we did before the gain and also the Q but there's a couple of controls um, that we don't have on our floating panel up here so first of all we can change the steepness of the curve down here so if I just select something very steep like say 72 decibels you can see how that affects the sort of character of that band and the slope. You can also change in this bottom left panel which part of the signal we're affecting. So at the moment we've got stereo selected. I could change that to say the left channel so we're only affecting the left channel or indeed we could use things like the uh, mid or the side channels as well. So very very useful indeed as you get a little further into your EQing. Now I just wanted to quickly 
quickly mention a couple of things about the UI. First of all, it's fully resizable. You just grab the bottom corner here in your door and you just drag that to resize the plugin. Secondly, you can change the whole look of the UI by double clicking on the logo at the top left here. So I'll double click on this now. You can see it goes to this very sort of white look, which I think is a little aggressive on the eyes. Um, double clicking it again goes to this darker look and then double clicking it again goes to a custom look which I set up a little bit earlier um, you can see I use fainter grid lines and I change you know some of the thickness of the lines and things running through this so if you don't like the basic look you do get a, a little bit of control just by clicking on the UI button up here and then you can see the adjustments here <laughs> let's imagine for a moment I feel that sometimes my guitar gets a little bit boomy just on some notes when they're played not all of the time so I might start off by looking for that boomy note so I'm going to create a band here I'm going to solo it and I'm going to play my guitar and I think it's this one this A2 here okay so I'm feeling that you know every time that A2 is being played things get a little bit out of control so what have I done I've selected the correct frequency range and then I've done a cut okay and I could obviously adjust the cue and things like that to sort of focus in a little bit more on that frequency the problem is I've now permanently reduced that frequency range even when that note isn't being played and it doesn't actually sound out of control or boomy so I could be sacrificing some other parts of the performance when I'm making this cut so this is where dynamic EQ comes in and kind of as its name suggests it's saying look we're not always going to adjust that frequency just sometimes when things get out of control when we cross a certain threshold so what I'd actually do to set this up is return this back to a zero position this is what I normally want this EQ man to be doing absolutely nothing but I'll switch on dynamic EQ by clicking on this little icon down here that enables all of the controls on the right hand panel that we can see. Now I can use this triangle control here to kind of set the target if you like, how much I want to reduce uh, this band by, how many decibels, um, when we do cross the threshold. And we can control the threshold over here, but before we do that, let's just see what's happening at the moment. <laughs> So you can see it's reducing this sometimes a little, sometimes a lot. We may want to make sure it's not doing it at all sometimes, so we might push the threshold up, for example. You can also change the behavior using the attack, the release, and the knee as well. You can get an approximation or a starting point for the threshold as well by using the learn function. So if we click on this button here and then play our material for a while. And then disengage the button. You can see it's chosen a threshold and a knee setting based on what it just heard now there's one particular feature with the dynamic eq with this plugin which i don't think i've actually seen on any other plugin including fab filters pro q3 and that's the ability to kind of disengage the detection from the actual frequency that's being affected what do i mean by that well I probably wouldn't want to do this, but let's say, for example, I want to actually affect some high frequencies up here, but only when the low frequencies get out of control. As you can see, I've just dragged this over here, and it's left this control behind. This is where it's detecting the frequencies for the actual dynamic EQ, so for the compressor, if you like, of the dynamic EQ. So it's detecting bass frequencies. When they get out of control, it's going to adjust the these high frequencies up here. Let's just see that in action. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I've used an extreme example there. What I may actually want to do is detect that A2 note, but actually reduce some of the sub-frequencies below it, for example. That's just one example I can think of. I don't think I have seen this on any other EQ before. I'm going to sort of experiment with this myself and see what use I can put it to. Let me know in the comments down below if it is in Pro Q3 and I've just missed it or in some other EQ. Now, before we take a look at the powerful sidechain features of this plugin, I just want to remind you, if you want to release your music to platforms like Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, etc., don't forget to follow the VIP link in the description down below for our sponsor, DistroKid. If you sign up using that link, you'll get 7% off your first year of membership. So this time, I've got the plugin inserted on a bass guitar track, which sounds like this. And it's playing alongside some drums, which sound like this together. And sometimes you'll find that your kick drum and your bass guitar kind of get in the way of each other, something called masking, where two instruments share a lot of the same frequency range and they kind of cancel each other out. So often what we do is reduce the volume of the bass guitar whenever the kick drum plays. Now you could do this with a compressor, but if you want to be more precise, you could use dynamic EQ to do this using a method called side chaining. Now the way you set up side chaining is different in each door. So I can't tell you exactly how to do it, but more commonly what you do is you start off by inserting the plugin, in this case, on the bass guitar, and then you do a send from the other instrument, in this case the kick, and you should see this plugin as a destination from your send in your door. I've already done that, so I'm kind of ready to go here. So what I need to do now is actually add a band. So I'll just add one in the middle here, it's fine. And then I am going to turn it into a dynamic band. So I'll click on this little button down here again. So it's now a dynamic band, just as we did earlier. And if I quickly play this, you'll see that the bass guitar is kind of acting on itself. It's detecting the sound of the bass and it's reducing these frequencies every time it plays. So of course what we want it to do is actually adjust the bass whenever the kick plays. We've already set up the side chain, so I'm now going to click on this S button down here to make sure it's detecting the side chain input. So I'll do that, I'm going to play it again. Now as you watch this sort of compressing this band, listen to the kick and you'll see it happens in time with the kick. Now, exactly what frequencies we're adjusting depends, of course, on the material. You could use your ears to determine where that is, but you can also use the collision feature within this plugin. So I'm going to the collision menu at the top here. I'm just going to turn detection on, okay? And as I play these two instruments now, you'll see this sort of red heat map, and that is showing where there's a lot of frequency collision, if you like. So have a listen. So you can see it's way down here, so I'll move this down here. Now, of course, as we saw earlier, our kind of detection system for Dynamic EQ um, is determined with this control here, and they're, they're unlinked with each other. Just click on this link button, and then that will follow that one around, if you like. So now we've honed in on the frequencies that we want to adjust. Let's have a listen again. And how aggressively we want this to work, we will now determine with things like the threshold, the attack, and the release. So what say you? Is this a free Fab Filter Pro Q beta? Are you going to be downloading it? Let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget, if you do, to follow the link in the description down below to download it. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I'll see you in the next video.